The Atheist Experience is live August 25th, 2002. I'm your host, Martin Wagner. Ashley Perry is my co-host. Afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us on this swelteringly, blisteringly, 100-degree hot Sunday afternoon. Good time to be indoors. Yes. Doing TV and watching TV. Yep, watch TV, curl up on the couch. Window, of course, except for all the sane people who are out at the pool or the lake or point <laughs> like uh, No, we're here. Um, this show is sponsored, by, as always, by Atheist Community of Austin, a nonprofit educational organization promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state. The ACA holds weekly meetings every Sunday morning, 10.30 a.m. at Hot Jumbo Bagels. That's downtown at 307 West 5th Street <clears throat> between Guadalupe and Lavaca, with the exception of the first Sunday of each month when we have our lecture series in the Longhorn Room of First Cafeteria North Cross Mall. Uh, September 1st, next Sunday, we will be at FERS, although we won't be having a lecture at uh, that date, uh, we will instead, uh, instead of having a guest speaker, we'll be talking about this. The Secular Memorial Event, scheduled for Wednesday, September 11th of this year. The Atheist Community of Austin has announced plans to conduct a non-religious commemoration of the lives lost in last year's terrorist attacks. The public memorial gathering, scheduled from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday, September 11th, will be held at Woolridge Square, 900 Guadalupe Street in downtown Austin. In the wake of last year's attacks, we have seen a swelling of popular opinion, aligning patriotism and religion. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, it all just came we up. won't go there. It's all swelling up in me. <laughs> Atheists, humanists, and freethinkers, and the non-religious will not be relegated to the fringes of society. Hundreds of us were among those lost last September 11th, and millions of us grieve just like all Americans. An estimated 500 of those people who died in the attacks considered themselves non-religious. However, most memorial services have failed to respect their most cherished convictions about the nature of the universe and their place in it. In Austin, as in the rest of our country, atheists, freethinkers, humanists, and the non-religious were alienated last year when even government-sponsored memorial events assumed religiosity on the part of both victims and mourners. This year, the ACA event Reflections on September 11th, a secular memorial, will provide an opportunity for those in attendance to put the events of the past year in perspective without appeals to supernatural authority. So that's our press release about the upcoming, our upcoming September 11th Memorial Gathering. You can find out more information about that at our website, atheist-community.org. Uh, Godless Gamers meet every Monday night uh, at 7 o'clock p.m. at the home of Russell and Virginia Glasser, and you can talk to either Russell or Ginny about that uh, little event. That's all kinds of fun. And Atheist Happy Hour takes place so about 7.30-ish p.m. on Thursday evenings at Antonio's Tex-Mex near the intersection of I-35 and Highway 183. Um, that's People trickle in all night long, so if you don't uh, see, uh, see folks right at the beginning, never fear, it picks up. <clears throat> the Nonprofits is our internet radio show, which is broadcast every Saturday afternoon at 2 o'clock p.m. at the atheistnetwork.com website. The show is hosted by Jeff D., co-hosted by Vic Farrow, Mary McManamy, and Russell Glasser. And it's an hour and a half of uh, also news, an news analysis and uh, witty banter um, back and forth between um, the usual gang of uh, nuts, and it's all kinds of fun to listen to. And your web browser no longer needs to have the real player plug-in to hear the audio stream. Thank goodness we, they, they now have, atheistnetwork.com now has a streaming MP3 thing that goes on, and it's a heck of a lot more. Uh, efficient, as far as I can tell. Really nice to listen to. Live chat feature goes on. Good show. Check it out. Uh, the University Atheists and Agnostics is a brand new registered student organization uh, put together by our very own Charles Tabany. Uh, the UAA is not uh, formally affiliated with Atheist Community of Austin, but it's uh, high time for UT students to have their very own uh, group for unbelievers. Uh, meetings will be at 4 o'clock p.m. on Fridays. And there is a website to go to where you can find out where the actual meetings will take place as soon as they get a room set up. And have we keyed that into the uh, character generator yet? I'm okay. I'm going to take that as a big no. <laughs> Silence from the control room. So the website for information about University Atheists and Agnostics is uh, as follows. www.ece.utexas.edu slash, and then tilde, that's that little squiggle line, tabony, T-A-B-O-N-Y, slash atheism. And if you, there it is! Hi. <laughs> Control room's only a full minute and a half behind us out here in the studio. <laughs> well, we got it going on. <laughs> well, maybe that's the first time they heard it. Okay. Uh, Good the job. The star should be a tilde. The star here, that star, 
Should be a tilde. One of those. Um, <laughs> what did they <laughs> the name, tilde? Why does it call that? A, whoever came up. It's with a it? Spanish. I, I know. I believe it originally in Spanish. I know, language. but why a tilde? Why not just call it what it is? A squiggle. And just stop confusing guys like me. Tilde sounds much more. Don't give me that look. Correct. You give me that look again. The little squiggle line. I know. Okay. <laughs> Why do we call it a Q rather than a circle with a slash? Kaching, you got me there. <laughs> Point taken. You're right. I'm only I'm wiring all the keys on a computer keyboard in uh, you know alphabetical order. I just never know. There are mysteries of life that uh, yeah, so we're are, here to solve. These them, are the Arnold. deep philosophical questions that we will be tackling on today's show. Exactly, a whole show today about why aren't the computer keys in alphabetical order? That's that's all it is. <laughs> okay, um, and finally, let's see. Okay, I've done the nonprofits, UAA. Oh, okay. Uh, the Godless Americans March on Washington um, is an event uh, still slated, as I understand, for September. No. For November the 2nd of this year, that's a Saturday, and that's an uh, American Atheist-sponsored event. We're not affiliated with that organization, but uh, many of our uh, members and our group as a whole has to have decided to be you know, one of the many sponsoring organizations. I think it's going to be all kinds of fun, uh, or not. But in any event, uh, you know, it's, it's happening, and you can find out more information about it by going to godlessamericans.org. And uh, I do believe that's it. Uh, we've done the memorial? Yeah, my goodness. Got through the announcements in a record seven minutes and two seconds. Okay, Ashley, <laughs> what is happening in world news? Let's okay. Um, got a couple of news stories here. Actually, before we go into news really quick, uh, we have a new version of our newsletter out. Finally. Yes. How, how long has it been since we've had a printed newsletter? Well, we did have one uh, last month. Okay. Um, okay. Well, but before that, though, it's been like a year. Oh, easily. Yeah, because last person easily. quit, and then nobody. Yeah, else it's been like a year and a half, I think, something like that. Right. Are we getting close up on this? Apparently, we are. They mm-hmm. are. They are chewing on it right now. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, it's uh, it's actually pretty good. Um, yeah, it looks nice. One of, the, one of the articles that was in here was uh, by a fellow that comes, Mike, um, about why he's an atheist. Mm-hmm. Tells about a little story when he was a kid and stuff like that, and it was really an excellent article. Uh, mm-hmm. There it is. Yeah, it's there's our logo. We got a yeah. really good. Uh, a Jill Ford, I think, is now doing the newsletter, yes. and she's got a really nice design sense. It's very clean. And yeah, it's a good sense. It's nice and clean. Um, yeah. We're actually getting people to write for it, which is kind of helpful. <laughs> Shocking. Yeah, it's it's, it's helpful for a newsletter. Bunch of bums. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it used to be. I mean, a couple people yeah. who have done it have said, you know, I, you know, yeah. they get nothing. Right. You know, get a little one-paragraph story from somebody, and it's mm-hmm. like, okay, now how do I fill up the rest of a newsletter? Well, now we have a real pro doing so, the newsletter, so it's yeah, it's it's, it's, it's excellent. So everyone's eager to write for it. So. Yay. And Yay us! We've got a little, <laughs> <laughs> little back padding. Okay, that's that. Yay! Um, now I've actually got a couple of updates here on uh, previous stories that we've had. Um, so unusual for the show. Mm-hmm. Usually we get a we get a news story and we say that we're going to follow up on it and then we just never hear any stories about it later. Yeah, I uh, got two of them here though. One, uh, state national religious leaders oppose Judge Moore's commandments display in Alabama. Uh, I think this is a story I actually had last week about Judge Roy Moore, mm-hmm. who had picked up this huge two two ton granite <laughs> monument. <laughs> Of the Ten Commandments, mm-hmm. moved it into the into the courthouse mm-hmm. under cover of dark, <laughs> under cover of dark, yeah, and, they... <laughs> and filmed it. <laughs> That's a crime, people. <laughs> but he filmed it. Yeah. Now he sells those videos on the internet, mm-hmm. and now when the ACLU comes along and tries to sue him for this and say get that monument taken down, he's using the money that he sold the tapes for to defend himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, <is> like. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, Martin, our illustrious host, is often asking, where are the regular Christians out there who are, you know, going up to the wackos and saying, you know, we don't agree with this. Mm -hmm. And why can't you just tone it down a bit? Mm -hmm. Well, they are. Oh, good. A a diverse array of state and national religious leaders has come out in opposition to Alabama Supreme Court Chief Judge. Supreme Court Chief Justice Roy Moore's display of the Ten Commandments at the state's highest court. In a legal brief filed today in the U.S. District Court for the Middle District of Alabama, three national organizations and 42 state clergy from various denominations objected to Moore's government-sponsored religious monument at the Alabama Judicial Building in Montgomery. The filing was hailed by Americans United for for Separation of Church and State, which is co-sponsoring a federal court challenge to Moore's display. 
Uh, religion doesn't need government's help, and most clergy know that, said the Reverend Barry W. Lynn, Executive Director of Americans United. This brief demonstrates that many thoughtful religious leaders in Alabama disagree strongly with Justice Moore's misguided religious crusade. Lynn continued, these religious leaders understand that the Ten Commandments belongs in our house of worship, not our houses of law. So, yeah. yay for them. So, we'll, yeah, we'll see if that, uh, you know, gets... Uh, yeah, we'll see what actually happens. I can't... Real impact. I'd be surprised if it stayed up, the monument as a whole. They're coming down well, like yeah, dominoes well, across the country, basically. This is Alabama, right? So, they're, they're going to... True. It is yeah. one of the tougher battles, yeah, but... Yeah, it's a little... It, it, this, the, the problem is that, um, yeah, there are precedents that have been set in situations where these Ten Commandments monuments have had to come down. The fact is, though, I think that right now... We are in the full force of a major backlash now against any sort of, you know, attempts to defend the wall of separation. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, something that the, the media has willingly played into, too. I mean, all this, the, 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 all, all the outrage and the hysteria that surrounded the pledge decision a few weeks ago. And now I think that there are these challenges to the Ten Commandments monuments, which... You know, no one's saying destroy these things and smash them and get them out. Yeah, they're just, saying it's not appropriate to have these in taxpayer-sponsored, you, you know, funded yep. government buildings exactly. because it's, it's, it, it signifies an unconstitutional uh, act yeah. of essentially playing favorites with the Judeo-Christian faith over other faiths. Yeah. And there's no sense in saying that it isn't. Uh, our own newspaper a few weeks ago had this dippy editorial. Oh. So, <laughs> you know, first off, tried to make the yeah. argument that it's not a... It's not a uh, religious monument. It's a historic monument, which is nonsense. Okay, yeah. setting aside the obvious fact that the first four commandments are specific instructions to like worship and honor the Judeo-Christian God. Yeah. So there's no way you can't call those non-religious. But the monument out by our Capitol building has um, at the very bottom an eleventh commandment for one. Well, there, yeah, there's the ten commandments, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> But it has, there's the, um, there's the Cairo symbol, one of the Greek letters, okay, the, yeah. the, the P with the X through it, which is the, okay. the Cairo, which is meant to signify Christ. Okay. Okay. And then that's at the very bottom in the center. And then at the corners at the very bottom are two stars of David. Okay. Okay. And then the very top in the center is this Coptic eye, which is an ancient Christian yeah. kind of Masonic symbol. You know, and you're trying to say that a monument with four religious <laughs> symbols on it isn't a religious monument yeah. is kind of dumb. Okay, yeah. we're not buying it. Um, let's so, also remember why these got there in the first place. It was basically a marketing ploy in the 50s to get the freaking yeah. movie advertised. Yeah, no one knows this. We, we just found this out. There's the group who put it up. Uh, the the uh, Fraternal Order of Eagles. Fraternal Order of Eagles. Foe. Foe. <laughs> <laughs> they apparently, was was it Jeff D. who did this research? Yes. found out that yes. uh, this was part and parcel of a big publicity stunt uh, from Paramount Pictures and Cecil yeah. B. DeMille's people to push that damn 25-hour-long yeah. Charlton Heston movie, you know, that ends up on TV all the time. That's what it was for. It was this big publicity stunt. It was, it was a, a publicity stunt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, not a bad one, but you know, True. I think the movie's on video now, <laughs> so we can go ahead and take the things down. It's not like we're still seeing posters for... I know, posters for E.T. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, the first Batman movie that came out yeah, you know, 20 years ago. Exactly. So don't need to keep promoting the thing now that it's out of the circulation. <laughs> that is really funny. The movie is out of theaters, people. But, we can um, take down the posters. The other uh, remark that the Statesman editorial made was this the whole a completely irrelevant aside, which was, okay, look, if you're offended by this, you know, no, one, no one's forcing you to look at it yeah. if you're offended by this. And this is what really kind of got me, because that's a typical distortion of what this whole... Yeah what these Ten Commandments monuments battles are all about. If this that's kind of the case, I want a huge porn picture put up on the side of the building. If, right. if you're not, po if you don't like it, just don't look. Right. So. <laughs> but if that were a valid argument in the first place, right? The point is that these Ten Commandments battles aren't about, oh, people, you know, it's not about, oh, I don't believe in God, and so, or I'm not a Christian, so I'm offended. Yeah. But it's not about anybody being offended by anything. Yeah. It's about making sure that the constitutional... Uh, guarantee that the government cannot endorse any sort of religion is being respected. It's not about, oh, I'm offended by this, that's why yeah. it shouldn't be there. The reason the thing shouldn't be there is because the Constitution says that the government can neither endorse nor prohibit yeah. free exercise of religion. Yeah. And when you have a big plaque 
with the holy words of a specific faith yeah. on a taxpayer-funded government building. They're endorsing that one religion. Precisely. Precisely. So either you got to do what Ogden, Utah said you got to do, which is put up <laughs> not only the Ten Commandments, but all sorts of other wacky yeah. religions, you know, wacky things, or we just need to have a nice secular public square yeah. and then let private citizens... Yep. exercise their right to exhibit whatever faith they choose to exactly. exhibit without the government saying, okay, well, we like yours, but we don't like everyone else's. Yeah. So we'll, 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 you know, yeah. our, our, okay, you guys are in the majority, so we'll give yours the yeah. favor. And any private know. citizen is take that, is right. able to take that two ton granite monument and put it up on his yeah. front lawn if they want. But it's not so. all of these battles in order to make sure that the wall of separation, you know, Jefferson's wall is nicely maintained, isn't about, Oh, making sure that you know unbelievers are being offended. Yeah. And I really would like to see and, and like to remind atheists out there that it, this is why it's so very important to stay on message with these battles and make sure that it's all about defending the Constitution and making sure that there is none of this unfair government endorsement. And because I do not want to see, you know, atheism sort of be, atheists kind of becoming the inheritors. Yeah. Of that wonderful '90s thing called politically correct, political correctness, which is all about, oh, that offends me, get rid of it. Oh, that yeah. offends me. Oh, that yeah. offends me, get rid of it. Yeah. And suddenly we have like you know, and then it's no, yeah. because that was sort of almost just some kind of weird, like oh yeah. no, certain certain thoughts and beliefs are permissible, and yeah. others aren't because they offend people, yeah. and you can't offend anybody. Look, being offended is a thing a that only you control. Yeah. Nobody can control what offends you. You choose that. And it's not a thing that you can go through life avoiding. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I there there's yeah. all kinds of things that offend me that I certainly to partake in, like really bad TV shows and <laughs> magazines and things, you know, Britney Spears albums and stuff like that. <laughs> that stuff offends my sensibility as a human being. But no one's saying, you know, let's okay, take it off the have, shelves. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, no one's making me. But that's. But again, but this is not. There's no government endorsement. Yeah. Involved in those questions. Yeah. So it's not a if question. If the government starts selling Britney albums beneath the Ten Commandments monument, that will be problems. Or, or making you so, buy it, you know. Exactly. Or like that, which, which yeah. would be... Like, our document, our taxpayer dollars going which to... Which might be what she has to do to get her career back on track. <laughs> but point is, it's not... So I, I really think it's very important for atheists to stay on message about this. This isn't about us being offended. This is about make sure that constitutional guarantee that there's no unfair endorsement of a majority religion over others yeah. or over none going on <laughs> right okay right agreed 100 percent. well okay you're absolutely right martin well, thank you good right next story okay <laughs> <laughs> okay uh next follow-up that we have the petition seeks to protect the flag and the motto this is another story that i had a couple weeks ago um about what is it u.s representative chip pickering mm -hmm. in mississippi he was trying to get a new uh amendment to the constitution that would protect the uh motto which according to him is in god we trust and the uh the pledge uh, he, spo he sponsored a proposed constitutional amendment designed to protect the pledge and in God we trust motto from any court action such as that taken by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in San Francisco. If passed, the amendment would write the pledge and motto into the, con into the Constitution, making it impossible for judges to rule them unconstitutional. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually found what you, the just... proposed... Amendment is, and it language. It really sounds kind of wacky. Okay. Um, according to WePledge.com, the proposed amendment reads: The first article of the amendment to the Constitution of the United States shall not be construed to prohibit the recitation of the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, or to be or to be or to recitation or use of the national motto, which shall be "In God We Trust." So it's basically saying, here's our motto, here's our pledge, mm -hmm. and you can't twist the so, First Amendment. Yeah, well, they basically want to uh, erase that little bit of the First Amendment that involves government endorsement of separation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a... Uh, so. Right. Hmm. So anyway, that's so what here, they want to do. Here's the one little part of the First Amendment that inconveniences us. So yeah. we want to have this new amendment to kind of negate that. Yeah. Well, hopefully that you know people will see through that little ruse. Hopefully, it's that's a pretty weak argument there. Yeah, we will see. And finally, we have the ACLU sues over evolution disclaimers in textbooks. Hmm. 
Uh, the American Civil Liberties Union has filed a federal lawsuit seeking to force the Cobb County School Board to remove disclaimers on evolution from thousands of middle and high school textbooks. The suit was filed Wednesday on US District in the U.S. District Court in Atlanta, just one day before the board was to discuss whether teachers should be allowed to teach faith-based ideas along, along with evolution as, ex, as an explanation for the variety of life. The stickers, placed on the new textbooks this month after a request from parents opposed to evolution on religious grounds, say evolution is a theory, not fact, and should be critically considered. Now, my main problem with this is what parents do, what right do the parents have to say what should go into a science textbook? It's well, called science. Well, there is the argument that, of course, you know, a parent ought to have the right to determine how their child's educated. However, what you don't have the right to do is make baldly inaccurate statements or to, uh, especially, or to make authoritative statements about things of which you know nothing. Exactly. Uh, and to, the, the way that creationists always phrase this by saying, oh, well, evolution's just a theory, it's not a fact. Exactly. They don't know what it means to be a theory in yeah. science. Yeah. In science, you don't even get to call your idea a theory until you have this massive body of evidence to back yourself exactly. up. Exactly. Until then, you're just a hypothesis. You're just yeah. an idea in somebody's head. They think, okay, not being educated in science, that theory just means, oh, it's this thing a guy made up. Yeah, it's and a good so idea. It's, it's, so if, if, if they're going to teach this thing that some guy called Darwin made up, you know, yeah. <laughs> which he didn't, of course, he spent his entire working life yeah. figuring it out. But if they're going to have this idea that just someone made up, well, why not have our idea that's, you know, yeah. and, and so it's, the problem is free exchanges of ideas are okay in an area where there is room for debate, but just about any working scientist will tell you that there's no debate over whether or not evolution has actually happened. You know it happens, just like we know the sun rises in the east. Yeah. But people not understanding and not educated in what science really is will make these dumb remarks. And that's the problem. Yeah. You know. Well, what I want to know is, you know, are they going to be willing to have evolution in church? If, they're all, if this is really about equal time. Yeah. You know, are they willing to have an actual, you know, not some creationist out there saying wrong things about evolution, have an actual yeah. biologist come into Sunday schools and talk about what evolution really is. Exactly. And that is what that will be then be equal time. Yeah. Mm. That, that could be funny. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, let's see. Ackworth resident Bruce uh, Horak, whose children graduated from Cobb schools, said students are not being told of the fat of the faults in evolution. You can't prove or disprove that evolution or inert materials created the diversity that we have, he said. Evolution and creationism are both philosophies. See, that's just a patently ignorant remark. Yeah. It, I mean, that's just a guy not knowing what he's talking about. Yeah. The issue yeah. appeared before the school board in March when several dozen parents yeah. asked that alternatives yeah. be taught. They presented, they presented a petition signed by 2,000 county residents demanding accuracy in textbooks. They were accurate before, most likely. <laughs> well, I don't know, yeah. Um, well, so the, uh, chances are they were teaching evolution. Well, is the National Science Foundation creation. getting in on this? Because, you know, it's time. They're, I mean, everywhere that, they're, that creationists have attempted to challenge science education, it has been shot down yeah. pretty effectively. Yeah. Especially, I mean, they had the thing in Kansas that lasted for a little while, but then Kansas became such a laughingstock nationally yeah. that they... Yeah. But uh, there were, you know, big challenges in New Mexico and Hawaii, in which case, you know, real scientists turned up at these hearings and said, look, here's how, it's, here's how it works. And at that point, scores went, oh, well, okay. Then there's no reason for creationism because, you know, the, evolution, you know, the factual basis of evolution is pretty clear. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't seem to me that there's anybody who actually knows anything about the topic at hand, um, you know, speaking out in Georgia. In, you know, maybe, there, maybe there will be. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully there will. Yeah. So. Amen. That's pretty much that's pretty much it for the news of the okay. week. Okay. Well, Our, I, did you want to go over yours? Well, I do. I have a quick one here, and okay. we'll, we'll go, I'll go ahead and read this one because this is all in the nature of the similar sort of ignorance that uh, ah, we just yes. talked about there. Yes. Um, while we let some of the calls rack up, um, this is actually almost a week old. But uh, you know, the Pope recently went back home. He went to Poland. And uh, made some really, really dumb remarks. So, you know, <laughs> that's a switch. Right? Um, but <clears throat> anyway, according to here's just a quick article from the New York Times. I'll read the salient points. Um, Pope John Paul II, at the highlight event of a profoundly emotional visit to his native land, says, told a crowd of at least two million Poles here today that mankind was going dangerously astray by letting scientific advances and cultural liberalism eclipse God's will. Okay, now there's 
all kinds of problems just with that statement right off the bat. That is, how could you possibly, <laughs> you know, how could mere mortals possibly eclipse the will of an all-powerful divine yeah. being, right? But that, but aside, okay, remember, omniscience <laughs> and omnipotence trumps non-omniscience and non-omnipotence at all times. Yes. That's just how it is, right? But anyway, you know, weird, scientific advances, okay, are the things that are leading us dangerously astray. Gee whiz, I thought scientific advances were the reason why we don't have millions of kids dying from polio at age 11 anymore. Yeah. And we don't have people, and we don't have things like smallpox anymore. You know, and we actually, we actually have like a decent quality of life now. Gee, you would think, but uh, this guy hasn't gotten the message. <laughs> um, the Pope said, frequently, man lives as if God did not exist. Correct. And even puts himself in God's place. Well, someone has to. Right? <laughs> the shoes and, are unfilled. <laughs> yeah. He said, uh, he claims for himself the creator's right. Now, here's, here's the key wording. He claims for himself the creator's right to interfere in the mystery of life. Mystery of human life, actually, is what he said. Now, think of this. The mystery of human life. Why should it be a mystery? Because the more things that are mysterious about the world in which we live, the more room there is for religion and superstition to present itself as the answers for these yeah. things. The less there is that's mysterious about life and about the world, the less reason there is to call upon magical, mysterious, superstitious explanations for things. Yep. You know, every single si there is one bad thing that scientific uh, uh, advancements uh, have resulted in, but it's bad only to guys like the Pope. It means that they're the power base of the church yeah. is being slowly whittled Dwindled away. away. Okay. And I guess he's still smarting over that whole big Galileo incident. You know, <laughs> but, um, you know the fact was, Galileo was right, the church was wrong, Sorry. too bad. You know, you can't say, was, was that a scientific advance that eclipsed God's will? <laughs> You're not you know, supposed to know such that, things. It is the way the solar system works, right? <laughs> so anyway, this is just... Um, you know, so, so ignorance continues its attempt to keep a stranglehold on the human mind, and, you know, the, the fight goes on. But just amazing. Yep. And this trial will settle the age-old question of science <laughs> versus religion. Science versus religion, I'm issuing a restraining order. Religion must stay 500 yards from science at all times. <laughs> Yep, if only if it would follow that in our schools. Ah, I was on The Simpsons for a clear view of how life works. <laughs> cool, eh? All right, well, we're at the point of taking uh, calls, and so let's see who is on the phone. Yep. We have Don on line one. We'll just start with Don. Um, uh, hi, you're on the air. Hello, fellas. How are you hi. doing? I'm doing fine. And you we're all right. I'm uh, just sitting here, and, well, laying here now, listening to your conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess atheist's main function is to oppose to God and religion, right? Well, we don't believe in God, uh, so it's not that we oppose God, we just don't believe in God. And as for opposing religion, well, you know, the longer religion is out there, um, you know, thwarting uh, attempts of human beings to actually advance their uh, progress in life, then I think that it's a thing that ought to be opposed. I mean, it's religion that is giving us, uh, that gave us 9-11. It's religion that is uh, having people blow each other up in Northern Ireland. It's religion that led to the Crusades and the Inquisition. You know, it's religion uh, that's um, uh, doing all, you know, religion does its fair share of good things for people. We won't, don't deny, but... Uh, Clearly, when you think of religion as being something that a bunch of people use to keep themselves in power over a bunch of other people, we don't think that's right. Clearly. Okay. Well, uh, in other words, uh, God doesn't exist. It's just religions who, uh, people who are, how should you say, unintelligent, uh, no. that foster this idea of God, and that's causing all the problems in the world. <clears throat> I don't know if it's so much they're unintelligent. A lot of I people certainly are wouldn't say all the problems, but no, it's not all there are the lots problems. of them. Not but. all the problems, but a good chunk of them. And, uh, you know, people, it's not that uh, they're unintelligent, just it's very easy to be misinformed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and when when somebody doesn't have the benefit of being, you know, well-educated in particular matters, and, it's, and, and someone else comes along in a position of authority and says, think how I say, you know, that's not a case of someone being unintelligent. It's just that a lot of people naturally respond to authority, I think, and, and they let themselves 
you know, be misled. Yeah, given a like pretty me- mediocre educational level in most of the country. Yeah, crummy. And then the only, you know, people are coming along telling them, you know, here's religion, here's God answer, everything like that. Well, mm-hmm. that's usually more interesting than what they get in school. So, sure, why not? When you got two ideas, one of which isn't being taught well, you're going to go on to the other one. Yeah. But it would be a mistake to think that, you know, I mean, we're certainly not up here, you know, at any time saying, oh, well, religious people are bad people. Far from it. No, no. Not in the least. There are people out there who uh, use and manipulate religion uh, to do bad things and to do things for their own gain. Uh, but, you know, we're certainly not saying that religious people as a whole just aren't good folks. Not far from it, in fact. Okay. You know, we think well, that there is a lot of, <clears throat> lot of room there, and as long as we increase education and increase opportunities for people, the less reason they will have, uh, or the, uh, the less reason they will have to uh, not think critically about just whatever they are told right. by authority figures. Could I ask you just a question? This is my information. Mm-hmm. So what's going to happen to you? You know you're going to die. You're mortal. I mean, that's just a fact of life. Sure. Okay? Mm-hmm. And uh, that very book that you talk about uh, tells you, even though you can get it from observation, that uh, that you're going to die and that when you die, that uh, life uh, as God created it goes on in some form. Mm-hmm. Well, we don't have any. Well, we, we don't have any reason to believe that. Oh, you don't believe that life goes on in some form? Not, not our life. Okay, so you just believe it's all over. Uh, it, it's not a very pleasant idea. I'm not happy at the fact that one day I'm just going to, you know, poof out of existence. Essentially, you know, my consciousness will just disappear. That's who not a happy you, thing. Who told you that? Well, well, you smart enough. The... You smart enough to figure that out on your own. Huh? Well, there's no evidence to well, you, point at anything else. Yeah, if my, if my computer's running and I got something on it and it pulls the power on it, you know, it just goes away. Yeah. If my car runs out of gas, it doesn't, you know, it, it just yeah. stops. You know, if it's just it, you know, uh, you a know, sand we, castle falls over, its castleness is yeah. just gone. I mean, we have, we have no evidence that any of the claims that religious belief systems make that there is some sort of other, there's some sort of entity in your body that maintains your life as, and your yeah. full personality and your memories and everything in some sort of other existence after your physical body dies. Yeah. We know that religions use that line to sell people on, uh, you know, on, on memberships and on uh, becoming part of the flock, and uh, it allows people to also deal with their fear of death. But you know, when you when you decide that you're just going to be the sort of person who faces facts and um, realizes that there's no evidence whatsoever to uh, promote any of those, that to, to support, I should say, any of those claims, then, you know, sometimes uh, just, a, you know, facing uncomfortable facts is all part of growing up. Okay, well, let, let me say a couple of other things that I'm going to get off the line. Okay, Doc. Uh, number one, there is no scientific fact that there was ever a Big Bang. It has never been proven nor demonstrated. Can I give you ten observational facts to support the Big Bang? Uh- well, we have very, very I strong evidence. Drive. We have very, very strong evidence that of what happened to the universe from about the size that it was a grapefruit up until today. Yeah. See, yeah, now, that's before that, it's still a little bit hazy and murky, but, you know, from grapefruit beyond, uh, we've got a pretty good idea of what happened. Yeah. Yeah, you have to understand, that, you have to understand what... It, it takes more faith to believe that than no, it let does me tell you what. Mm-hmm. So you have to understand what the Big Bang is, okay? This is what... This is in... What we talk about when, when yeah. people don't understand what, what science actually says. The B- Big Bang is a theory that has implications. Theory, I will accept it's a theory. Yes, and it's a theory in science because it has an evidentiary basis, right? Well, it's, it's not a, a theory, theory. It's a theory uh-huh. that, no, see, you don't know what the word theory means in a scientific context. Explain it to me. Okay, in science, as we just said on the program a few minutes ago, in science, your idea doesn't even get to be called a theory until it has had a great deal of research and evidence behind it. Here are some of the uh, observational facts supporting Big Bang Theory. What the Big Bang Theory is, remember this, it's a theory that has implications. And what that means is, if the Big Bang, or something like it, were the explanation for how the universe got to be the way it is, you would expect to see certain conditions existing in the universe today. And here are some of the conditions. You have the universe is expanding, that's one that we can observe. Uh, some of this gets a little technical, but here's uh, just some of the explanations. Uh, there exists a cosmic background radiation field detectable at microwave frequencies. And what that means is there is a field of radiation that no matter how you measure it, wherever you point in the universe, it's even. And you can observe this. 
so indicating that there is some sort of an expansion. Um, I'll use some of these that are less jargon heavy. The cosmic micro microwave background radiation field is precisely that of a black body. The cosmic microwave background radiation field has a temperature consistent. It's 2.7 Kelvin. There, exists, there does exist what they call a universal abundance ratio of helium to hydrogen consistent with the current expansion rate and cosmic background temperature. In other words, what all this is building up, and I don't expect you to understand what all of the, the terminology means, but there are things that astronomers and physicists can observe in the current state of the universe from which they can deduct, in order for this to have gotten here the way it is and to end up in this shape, it's consistent with something like an event like the, like the Big Bang. But it, you're, you're, you're right in that, yes, it is still an ongoing field of study. And um, there are things about which we can observe the universe and say, this is pointing to some sort of an explosion, what's called a quantum event. Yeah. Um, but you're right, it has to keep being studied. But that, of course, is the key difference between science and religion, where religion just says, here's how it worked, here, this is the final answer, and no further questions need to be asked. Science is all about going out and getting more information. Now, if there were a big list of observational facts supporting some invisible magic man doing things by magic spells, I'll be happy to look at that. But um, Look in the mirror. I'm sorry. Look in, I look in the mirror. I see myself. Absolutely. How do I get a? How do I get a? How do I get a invisible magic, all powerful you've being? Been, by looking you've at been in, in the, the form that you were created in, and you're not expanding. I don't guess too much. But let, let me make this Excuse comment me, about. Let me make this comment about what you. No, nope, you blew it. Okay, you want to come on and talk about things and uh, you know uh, discuss facts. That's fine. If you want to sit there and just be uh, you know snide and insulting when you haven't earned the right to be, uh, we're not going to talk to you anymore. Okay, um, Mike is online too. Hello, Mike. How dare you denounce our, our creator? How dare you do that? Uh, okay, I denounce our creator. There, that's how I dare. Anything else? You're wrong. I hope you, uh, I hope you learn from your mistakes. Uh, can you, uh, why don't you give me some arguments here instead of threats? Well, I can give you 10 million arguments, but how about I don't one? have time for that right now. Well, just give me one. 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 I mean, you will persuade one me a lot that, more. One is that it's a crummy life that you live if you don't do anything do you know after me? you die. Excuse me, do you know me? Have you ever hung out with me? No, I don't have to know you. I can just tell by looking have, at you. Have you ever? You can just tell by looking at you. Yeah. Ah, okay. Then your, then your power You're of crummy. observation. How, how so dare you? How limited. dare you denounce our creator that we yeah, are, not, are, gonna, are not going to achieve anything from just being here taking up space? That's just like saying we're, we're basically animals. How dare you say that? We're I, not I, animals. We're human there, beings. There can be, wait, when did I say that? We're human that? beings. In when the did I say that? So far you've made uh, just a whole bunch of straw man accus accusations. I haven't said that we're basically just animals. If you don't, if you don't believe that, I mean, we, if we you don't believe that we're each animals. individuals, we're basically just here taking up space and we might as well just all die. Well, that's, what that's, I see. that's the way I see it. If that's well, the way you see life, it, and life for you is miserable. If that's, if that's and, the way you see and it, you, and you better start reading, and you better start experiencing life before you die, because once you die, you're gonna you're gonna regret that you died. So if wait, you're, I'm, I'm still if you're, waiting. If Ashley, you're, one at a time. Oh, okay. Ashley, I'm still waiting to hear an argument from you. All I'm those hearing, are my arguments. No, all I'm hearing from you are the usual lame threats. That Christians no, they're use not threat. They don't have facts to back up their. You're position. taking it as a threat because you know yeah. that, that I'm right. Wait, I know you're right. No, yeah. sorry. I'm taking it as a threat. Okay. In the back of your mind, Here, you know that you're wrong. Here's the thing. Uh, what's his name? Mike. Okay. Ready to play in the big leagues? That you're not smart enough to call our show. And hey, listen like to this. me, man. There's people that die every day in this world. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah, not going to live thing, my life right? to take up space. Okay, and live for a miserable life that people die dude, and kill dude. each other all for I've no reason at all. Okay. And saying that there's no justice. Is at the end of that, that's ridiculous. How can you even? How can you even fathom to think of that? Okay, okay. You feel, all you all feel all shame of yourself. Go ahead, Ashley. Go ahead. Two things. One, you're the one who's saying that life is so miserable and boring and yeah, hellish. Yeah. I think life is great. Yeah, yeah. Life is for, awesome. for you, but what about see, for the people that are dying? Well, see, you never asked them. Okay. You, Point number two. The people that that are getting murdered. Okay. What about those people? Okay. Why isn't Point. your God saving those people from their murderers and, and from people who are being what? Well, yeah, why, why, yeah. why is your God allowing all this bad stuff to well, happen? Well, because that's life, man. That's the way that life is. That's so, the way so, it's people that you that that are so incorporated into care. other people's lives that don't believe in God that commit these crimes. Oh, Do you understand the problem? With you're that? accusing us of committing crimes. Well, I'm saying that people that think like you well, don't oh, believe in God. Then you don't know any of us, yeah, dude. I don't have to know you. I just know the fact that you don't believe in God. That's all I have to know. <laughs> okay, you know, you, you you remember what happened a year ago in New York City? There was this thing with planes and buildings, right? <laughs> okay. 
Hey, you know the guys who did that? Right. They had this big long list of prayers. Five pages. The word God appeared on yeah, that list. Yeah, but they, they think times. of God as something different. You, yeah, you're but they, but they be, hey, but they believed in God. It doesn't matter, man. Well, you, it, there's only, there's wait a only minute, one God, said, man. You can believe. Okay. There's different ways to believe in God, and there, but there's only one God. Like I've uh -huh. heard before, people say that okay. many people like different religions. They have a different idea of what God is, but uh -huh. at the end, it's only one God. Have you ever heard about that? I, I've, I've heard you... Uh, wait We've minute. heard hundreds of yeah, weak we, arguments we in hear, the past. We hear guys like you say, there's this big God and proclaim it to be true and not offer evidence. Yeah, we hear that all the time. But the fact is, the point you just made was that it's people who don't believe in God who do bad things, and we just then gave you evidence of actually bad stuff happened. Look, man, my point is that, look, here's my main point, right? like, listen to me. That. Listen you to you me, man. This is my main point, point, all right? You ignored the Just point. Just listen to my point, okay? You have okay. What what is the purpose? What the hell is the purpose of living in this world uh, among among each other? Okay, mm -hmm. if, even if we are, you know, boring or whatever you want to call it, what is the point of living here if we're not going to get anywhere, man? See, what, can you answer that question? Yes, I if will. you can't answer that question, then okay. I then I'll I will answer. respect your your, I'll your the theories. Question. Okay, I'll answer it right now. Okay, go ahead. Okay, the problem is you have been indoctrinated into thinking That's, that there is no. No, point I don't buy that. Unless you unless you get a reward when you die, it's not a reward, you have been man. Taught it's not life. to appreciate life. Okay. No, it's just. I'll tell you what. Not a, it's not a reward. Hey, hey okay. Hey, you You're wanted, a, you wanted us. Hey, hey, here's his answer. You wanted us to answer the question. I'll do it, and then I'm gonna let you go. If this life is the only life we have, right? Then it's the only life that can possibly matter. Therefore, it does. Clear? No, it, it's it's right. not the only life. Well. Well, that's yeah, how I we look at it, that. and we make we make because our life. Because if it's the only life, life, man, we should all just we should all just rot in hell, like with all the other animals and all the other well, like every, and, all the other bad people. We should and just I, like and I am so we glad we just sit here and like and like act as apes and like start and, running around and, and killing am, each other. And I am so glad <laughs> and, and, and start I, jumping off buildings and start crashing planes into other buildings. And I am so glad wow. that I do not have your religious beliefs in my mind. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you don't take Christ into your life and understand. Okay, he just went into full idiot mode. I am Jeez. so. This is what religious indoctrination does to a person's mind. It makes you hate life itself. It makes you think life itself has no point whatsoever yeah. if none of this is true, and because it's all bad, it's all rotten. Yeah. This is what is really bad about these. You know, you want to say why we oppose religion? It makes guys think like he yeah. does. Think that it's all pointless. It's all bad. It's all horrible. There's yeah. no reason to do anything unless I have this belief system. Yeah. That's what. That is how religion gets you. That's how it exercises control over you. That's how it takes your money. Yeah. That's how it makes people crash planes into buildings. Yeah. Okay. Without when, you're, when you're free of all that and you just use your rational mind to think about life, hey, look, if I see evidence for some sort of divine being, that's one thing. But when religions come along and say, it's all meaningless and bad unless you just accept what we have to say and don't ask questions yeah. about anything... You end up with a guy like that who is a really miserable guy, even though he was accusing us I of know. it. He was projecting all that misery onto us, <laughs> but he was the one who spent the whole call talking about how... A life sucks. Life sucks, <laughs> right. And like, I, you know, I, I really came down hard on that guy, you know, audience, but, and I don't mean to, but, you know, the point of fact is... You know, I, I just, I really feel sorry for people like yeah. that because... Without who, God, life is everything. Yeah. Who, who is next here? Josh is on three. Let's see what he has to say. Hey, you're on the air. Hey, guys, thanks for taking my call. My pleasure. First, I'd like to apologize. I hope you don't equate uh, the behavior of people who claim to be Christians uh, <laughs> with the life of Jesus Christ. Well, I don't. I know for a fact that all uh, Christians are not as uh, arrogant as our first caller or as just completely way off loopy as our last caller. However, um, you know, it's a shame that, uh, you know, that is what religious beliefs can do to some people. You know, make right. it the way they think. Certainly, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, just a few things. Certainly. Um, the about the Pope, his when his phrase "the mystery of life," I think he was referring to birth control more than just um, you know right. total supernatural yeah. activity. So that was just one interpretation of his phrase. Well, yeah, that's the, that was one thing specifically. He talked about cloning and birth control and like genetic manipulation. Yeah, so I think that's what he was talking about. Yeah. The mystery but of life. But you know, but you know, it's it's uh, uh, genetic. Uh, advances in um, medicine, developing medicines, are going to be the thing that wipes off out the Parkinson's disease that he is suffering from from the face of the earth. That's what's going to cure Parkinson's. All this, all this res uh, research and study 
into the human genome. Right. Potentially, yeah. I, I, just, yeah. I, I, I agree with you. You know, him talking about you know how science can be <laughs> bad is totally crazy. But uh, a couple other things I wanted to touch on. You know, the scientific method. We're talking about evolutionary theory. Mm -hmm. You know, the, actually, the evolutionary theory isn't true scientific method because the scientific is observable and repeatable, and obviously you can't do that when you're talking about history because we well, can't go back in time to see that it was actually happened. So it, it, a theory yeah. is different from the actual scientific method. Yeah, but you know that there are other ways that in, which, um, in which evolution has been observed. Sure, you I, know, am, not well, ju I not understand just that there, there is microevolution, which we can obviously observe, yeah. but to talk about, you know, the genesis of things, you know, the actual beginning of things, well, remember uh, we the can't actually, actually use the yeah. scientific method well, we, I, I, to, I, I, to I, talk about those things. Not to interrupt you real quick, but you know, the uh, evolution actually doesn't, the beginnings of life, okay, is an entirely different field of study. That's a field of study called abio abiogenesis. Right. Um, evolution simply discusses how uh, there are changes in gene frequency in a species over time. Sure. And sure. so that's yeah, really, and that's in really what, evolution. We can obviously observe those things. Yeah. But um, but, but, I guess, I guess but macroevolution too. I mean, macroevolution is really nothing more than microevolution on a larger scale. Yeah. And, but, and, but the evolutionary theory ultimately says that you know we are a, you know a cosmic accident. You know, the, so? the, out of the Big Bang. Well, so. And well, uh, well, I understand. And, and so, if we take that to its logical conclusion, we, there is no God. We are a cosmic accident. So there is no no moral absolutes. And so, how do so? we determine right and wrong? So if that's okay, the case, you must be a new viewer to the show. <laughs> that's good, because we we discuss. Sorry. It, it, it's just this is a topic that it seems like every show we get in on this, and we've discussed this quite at length. I'll tell you how we observe right and wrong. Um, our species is a social species. Right. Okay. And we I've have heard to get along. We have before, but, yeah, but we just, have to coexist. Right. right. So we determine what is right and wrong by what actions result in consequences that are either favorable or unfavorable to the success of our species as a whole. And the ones that are favorable, we call those right. And the ones that are unfavorable and damaging, we call those wrong. It's, very, it's simple applied knowledge. There's nothing really magical to it. So how come uh, people <laughs> who, are, who are smart like y'all don't always do the favorable thing? Well, you know, because we don't have hand. perfect information. Yeah, news, news flash. I'm not infallible. Right. Okay? You know? I mean, every, right. everyone even, makes mistakes. Even the information we do know and the right things we do know, we still don't do. There's still that sinful nature that we all have to be honest with ourselves that we don't always do the right thing, even though we know the right thing to do. Yeah, but, so, yeah. but we try. And, yeah. and we, uh, and there's, there's, if you're smart, there's, there's, But right, you got to admit, there's a sinful nature that we're dealing with. I, don't, I wouldn't call it a sinful nature. I would just say that the human beings are learning animals, and in the process of doing that, we yeah. often make mistakes. We're right. trying to learn yeah. that we're trying to learn where that proper balance is between me, 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 and living tomorrow. Right. So. Well, uh, another few things on evolution. Evidence is the evolutionary theories has evidence, but it's based on certain assumptions. Okay. Uh, like carbon, that carbon fourteen dating is reliable, or you no. know that element, elements break down at. You know, certain not, rate. Those are two different things, actually. Carbon-14 and something like that would be used to determine how old, you know, a, a wood stump is or something like that. Right. It doesn't well, tell well, anything well, about evolution. When they say something is evolution. 60 million years old, they're using those forms of, of dating, which may or may not be reliable. You know, we assume no, it's that, possible. That, that it's reliable. We're, we just you, you read the paper and it says something 60 million years old. We assume that that dating is reliable, but we well, don't know well, it's, if it's, it's true based or not. Of, it's based upon the fact that there are these, um, that the rate that the isotopes that are being used in the dating process have a known, what's called a half-life. Yeah. That is to say, they break down at a known rate. Right. And so and, that's, that's how assuming, you can sort That's of, assuming that our atmosphere and our world has been the same this whole time. Well, no, it doesn't, actually. I mean, uh, there are... Uh, well, if the atmosphere and the environment's different, the breakdown is going to be different. Well, there is. Uh, are you familiar? With the, the, a couple of weeks on the show, we had um, Alan Glasser on, who was a doctor yeah. of uh, plasma physics, and he sp he spoke about something called deterministic chaos, where which is um, a current field of study right now in physics uh, that talks about how even the slightest, even at a, the smallest micro level of a change in initial conditions, can cause certain. Yeah. Results suddenly to be wildly different down the road of an event than they might have been. So there are limits certainly to where we can uh, predict accurately how certain events right. have transpired or that they, you know, will transpire. However, but the point is, sure, there are ways, there are things that do not allow for absolute correct answers all the time. Right. But well, your that, evidence, but your, that, ten, your, ten, your list of ten was was real nice, and those. 
those list of evidences you gave don't necessarily conflict with the creation theory that God started the Big Bang. But then, but they, but none of those specific evidences provide actual evidence of that being himself. The question of that being's existence is an entirely different matter. Right. Well, you know, and, what, has and, anybody told you you're a great man of faith? Because it takes more faith to believe in the evolutionary theory than it does the creation yeah, theory. Yeah, because we, the chances are so improbable that came about by chance. Yeah, we hear that all the time. Well, first off, there's the whole probability argument specious because there's no point, you know, debating the mathematical odds of something that's happened. I mean, it's happened, so there it is. But. Uh, there, um, right, the, but, but the mathematical odds are happening is, by chance. Are exactly, so crazy. exactly. It's it's not happening by chance. Uh, chemistry so what is, is it? A, is it a god? Chemistry is a pretty is a pretty precise science. When you put certain chemicals together, they will join up. But where do those when you put other ones from? together, what they will the not. Where did the chemicals come from? Where did your god come from? Well, he reveals himself very clearly through the Bible and through Jesus. Okay, see, okay. so now, now, yeah, but, okay, right. Before see, that. Before, right, okay. Of course, we have to go back to the bottom okay, line. Okay, no, wait a minute. Now, you're, hang on. You're telling me that all of this evidence that I've provided for in terms of Big Bang cosmology and all of the different resources that exist out there supporting evolutionary biology and microbiology and uh, cosmology and physics and all that, you're saying, oh, that's flawed. Oh, there's problems. Oh, you can't rely on that. No, but I, then I, I ask, wait, that? wait, but then I ask you about God and you say, oh, well, it's in the Bible. And no, that's no, 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 no. Like, you didn't let me finish. Yeah. I, of course, I have to you know, yeah. finish my I mean, remarks in saying that's assuming that the Bible is reliable sure. and that Jesus Christ is reliable. Sure. And so I think it doesn't take a whole lot of research. It does take research to understand that the Bible is one of the most reliable sources of antiquity. Then that, how do you account for the four conflicting re uh, resurrection stories? Well, they complement each other. They don't conflict each other. I see. It's, it's like I, I you, see. So you, the, I you, see. You're so Martin hang on, hang on. and Ashley and you and another buddy, we saw the same thing. But if we wrote an essay on it, it would be a little bit different. But we would observe the same thing. It was just, you know, a different, you know, view yeah. of the thing. And and so you're you're willing to go ahead and make this allowance for biblical texts, but you're not willing to say, oh, well, all the different evidences from these different fields of science complement each other. You're not willing to give science the same benefit of the doubt. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I love structures. science. I love the scientific method. I love physics. I love chemistry. I but, love mathematics. But clearly, uh, you prefer your Bible story to how everything happened to the way to what science. No, is no, no, no. Listen, and and I all ideas, uh, mm -hmm. not all ideas are equal. And when we're talking about scientific ideas, mm -hmm. they are very reliable for the most part. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the ones we can see and observe and are repeatable, like chemistry and physics and mathematics. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the, <laughs> it, it just makes logical sense. Those yeah, are very and, reliable. And, and, and now, we can confirm the findings of evolutionary biology much the same way. Okay, well, in, in a different... Well, when you're talking about the genesis of things or the history of things, we can't really use the scientific method, so we have to use other ways of... Well, of course we can. Do you, do, you know, do, you, do you know what the scientific method is? Yes, okay. you, you you have an experiment and you observe it and it's repeatable. Uh, well, yeah. that's that's kind of an oversimplification. I'll, I'll, what you have is you start with a hypothesis, okay, and then you begin a process of research and experimentation, as you said, in the effort to see in the effort to what's called falsify your hypothesis. Mm -hmm. In no, other I, words, I, I went to I, I stayed awake in class. I know what you're okay, talking so, about. Okay, so so you know what falsification is? Yes. Okay, well then we don't have to go through the Reader's Digest version of that. Right. Okay. But but well, again, you have to admit that when we're talking about history, we can't use that method. Well, why can't we? I mean, well, 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 but we're not just talking about you history. You have a time right? machine that we don't have. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Well, okay, we're, but we're not just talking about history, right? I mean, we're talking about other fields like, for example, biology, paleontology, chemistry, physics, quantum physics. Uh, it's not just the historical record that is used to determine how, for example, uh, living things evolved. It's not just the historical record. There are, as uh, Ashley pointed out, uh, we know we know how chemical reactions work. Right. And we know we we know how uh, uh, um, particles and organisms age. Uh, we know how speciation works in living things. I mean, there's right. there is well, such a wealth of different fields. Sure, I agree with you. Those are wonderful and, things. And but I guess my challenge to you guys is, is I'm sh I, I'm assuming you've read the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And you've read the Old Testament, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of evidence out there that what we read in the Old Testament is exactly what happened to the Jewish people, that it's a reliable um, telling of history of what happened to the Jewish people and how God revealed himself through the Jewish people. And then we read in the New Testament how God revealed himself through a man named Jesus Christ, and he lived a perfect life for 33 years, and then he hung and died on a cross for all the, for the sin of all humanity, and, and including... Okay, which is you a know, sick and twisted idea, yeah, off which, topic. Which is creepy. But, but then, but then uh, how... But then what, what I would like to know what then the additional historical evidence is, the extra-biblical evidence is, to corroborate what's in the Bible. I mean, oh, there are some things that can be... Josephus... 
the Jewish historian who yeah. talked about Jesus and all the wonderful things he did. You know the testimony in Flavinium is considered a forged, pa forged passage. Who, who are you talking about? The, the, the passage in Josephus that you're referring to, which is called the Testimonium Flavinium, oh. is considered a forged passage. Well, not, maybe, yeah. maybe there's a few scholars and I'll tell you why. That, but and the majority I, and of scholars... You, hang on, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. No, it's the general consensus, and I'll tell you why. The passage appears in uh, an area in which it is not supported by any of the contextual passages. Suddenly right. this passage in the text pops up talking about Christ. Well, do you, do you which honestly is very believe that all the, all the good things that Christianity has done... Uh, you know, to change our world for better. I mean, how do you, how do you, uh, you talk about all the bad things, you know, you're real quick to mention all the bad things, sure. but what about all the good things, all the schools and the hospitals and, and the good things that Christianity has done? I mean, the, the I, yeah, benefits I it's done for women, good, yeah. the benefits it's done for children. There are a lot of good things. Uh, Santa Claus can make kids be good in December. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean he's real. Yeah. I mean, uh, we're not denying well, that. it certainly gives credence that there is a real living God who's changing people's lives, and those people will change other people's lives for the good. Drugs I mean, and alcohol can change your life. Yeah. I mean, it, not any more than it gives credence to the fact that, gee, you know, the idea of Santa Claus makes children behave at Christmas time, so that must give evidence that there really is a Santa Claus making them behave properly. Well, no, uh, not really. Well, you're right. You're right. Yeah. But, uh, so, I, I, I mean, I, we appreciate your questions, and we're not trying to, I mean, we're, we're trying to answer you hopefully clearly and, and not disrespectfully yeah. on but I, just, I mean, I just I have a whole shelf full of books on both sides of the issue mm -hmm. of the evolutionary theory and the creation theory, the reliability of the Bible and the New Testament and the life of Jesus. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I just want to make sure you guys are reading those good yep. scholarly books as well. Sure. Well, I mean, I, I try to read as much as I can get on my hands on. on the Case for Faith. Yeah. Have you all read The Case for Christ and The Case for Faith? Yep. I'm in the middle of reading it and reciting it or refuting it pretty I mean, much these, line these, for these line. Are, these, are guys, these guys are smarter than you and I will ever be. I mean, and they, they well, fully judging, believe that Jesus was totally reliable. Well, um, I've, <laughs> I've read some of Ashley's rebuttal to uh, the, the case for faith, and it seems pretty strong. And uh, some of the arguments that I have seen in, in Strobel's books are, are pretty specious. I'm not denying that these guys aren't smart guys, but smart people can make extremely specious arguments. Yeah, yeah and, and so you can know. atheists too. Um, <laughs> we don't we don't deny it, but but hey, again, we're we're looking at what arguments are being made, and we're saying, well, it doesn't make sense because of this reason or that reason or whatever. Yeah. Um, like I say, you can go through any of those books and find right. you know either logical well, guess, problems with well, it or whatever. I understand. I, I I see where your point is. If I could make a final comment, sure. That uh, everybody has faith in something. Everybody yeah. in the whole world, all six billion people woke up this morning for some bottom line motivation. Some people have faith in Buddha or Allah or Jesus. Some people have faith in Not money everybody. or power or cars. Or some people have faith in the altruistic, you know, uh, doing good things for other people like you guys. Um, but everybody, everybody's faith is only as good as the object in which they put their trust. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, I don't okay, know so that let me, I... Okay, let me keep going real quick. Yeah. A person's faith is only as good as the object in which they put their trust. And so if you have to determine if that object is reliable. Obviously, money and power and fame and popularity aren't that reliable. And we know that Allah isn't that reliable. We know that Buddha isn't reliable. But really, well, in my research, the most reliable thing a person can put their faith in is not, you know, the moral good in other people and in ourselves, but that the fact that Jesus Christ really lived and walked this earth and that he died and came back to life. That, in my yeah. research, is the most reliable thing a person can put their faith in. So what all of us need to do is find the most reliable thing we can put our faith in. In my experience of dealing with human relationships, entrusting in the good in other people and trusting the good in myself is not very reliable. So I'm I want to challenge you guys to find something more reliable. Well, it's, it's, it's gotten me through, and it's been a reliable thing for me. I'm sorry that trusting in uh, uh, the goodness of human nature and, and of your own nature wasn't a reliable thing for you. I'm sorry to hear that. Now, are you, do you guys so, are you guys are married and have kids? Uh, I was married for a little while. Yeah. Do you have kids? I don't. <laughs> Our producer does. <laughs> okay, I'm waiting for you guys to have kids. Okay. Our, this is going to totally change your theory. I, many people well, in our group do have kids. Sometimes multiple generations, yeah. lots of kids. Yeah. Well, so. you're going to experience firsthand the the, the uh, depravity of <laughs> mankind because you don't have to teach a kid how to lie or steal or beat up their brother and sister. Okay. Well, the, you know. Yeah. I think I think we call that immaturity. Not. No, I wouldn't call it depravity, but I would call it immaturity. Yeah, we oh, okay, teach them okay. how they have to live with other people. Yeah. So once again, I taught them. God didn't. Yeah. Right. Remember, it's lessons well, learned. I just, I just don't think. I just don't think you guys have a reliable source of how to find a life made, how to raise a family, and where we go when we die. You well, know, you, I want to challenge you guys to find something more reliable. Well, I I go by what the I I decide what my opinions are on a certain subject, based upon what the the validity and the strength of the available evidence is. 
I don't see any uh, evidence that convinces me that any of the claims made by any of the major world religions, and particularly Christianity, are true. If I were to encounter such evidence, I'd be happy to consider it. As far as um, what I use to guide myself through life and to be a good person, well, again, it's proven generally to be, you know, in my experience, you know, we, if we want to talk about personal experience in these things, fairly reliable. Well, you know, well, I, I, we, I know, have we, know only... that, we know that socially and personally, divorce yeah. is not a good thing. So well, sure. where, did, where did it fall short for you? Well, it fell short for me because uh, my wife and I just went different directions in our lives. Well, we uh, know that for the, for the good of society, divorce has, it does no good for, yes, well, for, our, you, for our own souls and for society. Yes, well, you know, according to the most recent figures from a group called Barna Research, yeah. which is a Christian polling organization. Of course. Yeah. Okay, so you know them. Yeah. Uh, 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 ha- are not affiliated with any religion uh, or have among the lowest divorce rates in the country. They're like 24%. Right. Well, I, again, oh, that was my other comment I meant to make. Yeah. There's, a, that, there's a huge difference between religion, uh, including Christian denominations, and a true, vital, dynamic relationship with the living God. Yes, I've heard, heard that, that too. before, I'm sure, a million times, the sure. difference between religion and relationship. You guys are always talking about religion, mm-hmm. but the thing that defines true Christianity is that it is a relationship with the living God. Yes. Well, we usually find that that argument tends to pop up when... Uh, we mention something really embarrassing or really negative that a particular Christian or group of Christians has done. Other Christians will usually, we'll find, circle the wagons and say, oh, those guys aren't true Christians. You know, we're the true Christians because <laughs> right. we'd never do right. that. Well, again, yeah. even though God indwells man, man is still fallen and imperfect, and so he still screws the deal up. But that's what God does all throughout history is he takes man's screw up and turns something good out of it. Man, is, God is always in the business, you know, of, of never giving up on man. Yeah, you know, I even just have a hard time with this. Science and people have done a pretty good job of turning us around, too. I, it, yeah. it's, it's done a lot. We've come a lot farther under, you know, by helping each other and by, you know, having science, you know, help us out than by having religious help, religion help us out. Right. I, I mean, religion I has done like, good I things for like folks. Of course. The logical but, conclusion of, you know, you, you're, but, you're trying to help people out because if there is no God, why would I want to help people out? Why don't I get all the Because I have to deal with you tomorrow. In the moment. Because I have to deal with you tomorrow. Yeah. Why if not? I just pass you up on the highway and you're out there in an accident or a flat tire mm-hmm. and just say, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya. Yeah. Well, then chances are when I have a flat tire, you're going to do the same thing to me. That kind of sucks. Yeah. I mean, we have to get along as a species. We, we talked about this before. It's all about exactly. we got, we got to coexist. You would have them doing to you. Guess who said that? Uh, was it Confucius? <laughs> a lot you of people before the Jesus. Bible. You can't get away from it. A lot yeah. of people before Jesus yeah. in the Bible. Yeah, the golden rule. Thousands of years before. Yeah, I know. We got, we got to move on. But the golden rule was credited to Confucius um, hey. 500 years before Christ. I, I appreciate you guys' time. You guys hey. are great. Hey, we love talking to you, yeah. but uh, it kind of went on, and so we need to get going. Yes, sir. Thanks. Talk to us and talk to, uh, talk to us later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Do unto others, then split. <laughs> yeah. Hey, is it any surprise that the major religions of the world have adopted like various moral precepts and said, here are our rules, here's how to get along? I mean, that, there's nothing unusual about that. Okay. If, you know, in early human society and in early civilizations, you know, religions were more or less the thing that was at the cultural center. Yeah. Okay, because that's what most people had, particularly in a pre-scientific culture. So it's not surprising that you will see fundamental moral precepts that are just good common sense becoming the basic rules of how to get along introduced by religions thousands of years ago. There's no big surprise about that. But I'd also another thing I just wanted to point out to our last caller, and that was a fun call. I know it went off for yeah. some time, but I just wanted to say last thing. Uh, there is, again, another... We almost got there, but we didn't really address it specifically, which is that there is an assumption among folks who who prefer, you know, religious explanations to scientific ones, like creationism, that if you can just pick apart and point to any noticeable inconsistency or flaw um, in any kind of field of scientific study, then that automatically means that the whole house of cards come tumbling down. And somehow, by default, that proves the religious explanation true. Well, it doesn't work that way. Even if... And they also don't want to apply it in the other direction. If we find a little inconsistency with the Bible, they want to explain it away. They don't want to say, well, the whole Bible, then, it must be bad. But then again, I don't know. Well, the difference there, of course, is I don't know any any science, any scientist. And and if he is, he's a complete idiot saying, (laughs) these are truths handed down from me on high by a divinely inspired source. Okay. No, science is all about, you know. Yeah, except our <laughs> illustrious Paul Wilson there, who always says that. But, um, yeah, so there's, there's a difference. But, but look, even if uh, evidence popped up tomorrow 
that completely threw everything that we thought about how evolution works down the commode. Yeah. Okay, that wouldn't that would not prove the creation is true. That would not yeah. prove that a god did it otherwise. Creation is still in the exact same boat as it is today if that happens. Yeah. We just need a better theory to explain what we do see in the world. Yeah. And once again, there's if if creationists want to have equal time at the at uh, at the table, that's fine, but the problem that many folks have pointed out with creationists is that you know, where are the papers in peer-reviewed journals, you know, yeah. about you know, where is you know, where is the falsify we have we know how Evolution as a scientific theory could be falsifiable, but how do you falsify the notion that a god created the universe? How is yeah. that possibly falsifiable? Yeah. You know, that's another... Anyway, but it's a, long, a lot of good questions, but, uh, you know, again, um, you know, no stumpers, I'm afraid. You know, <laughs> Matt is on line one. A lot of folks, thanks for holding. We're going to get to you now, starting with... Matt, you're on the... The air. Hi. How you doing? We're Hi. okay. We're having fun. That's cool. Yeah. More power to you. You yeah. guys are very interesting. Mm-hmm. Kind of noticed. Maybe uh, that sign is, you know, very cool, but I oh, think some people kind of are old. brainwashed into that. They see that first word, atheist, and they think, you know, negative things, you know, you know, like right up there with satanic or something. They think that you're anti-God or That's something. kind of what we're fighting on the show. <laughs> nah. So um, I'm not a... Uh, for or against anything like that, not fighting for it, just bringing up different points of view and stuff. And of mm-hmm. course, you know, the church is an opiate and, you know, was created to, you know, p- take, you know, the power people were sending to all powerful. All mm-hmm. powerful is indefinable. For mm-hmm. instance, all powerful can count every blade of grass, every grain of sand. It's done. Man trying, thinking, fathom doing that. No, all powerful is just, you know, our, our own vast mind is a great, vast thing. It's insulting to it to try and and to all powerful to try and fathom what all powerful is so we should live as what what we are a being these are all just ideas of course and you know how i feel being created we're mammalian like you know animal like and then we're created through the uh, written word to quote a, a great you know guy i think the written word is a lie that guy is john lydon just to give a perspective, <laughs> all, all these perspectives occur, and, and yes, everything has it's been written just so we have to take it and we have to, you know, analyze it and go, oh, wow, and, you know, John came up with, wow, it's a lie. Go on. Long ago, you know, we have evidence that uh, on this earth there was mining done, which we do not have the technology to do now, you know, over, you know, hundreds of thousands of years ago by some type of being, you know, not a human, but some type of being. So they had to come to Earth, you know, go on with some time like uh, with a... Well, I haven't heard that one before. Yeah. Okay, well, that's cool. Um, Just fathom it. You know, it's hard for me to state it, you know. There are, like, there are like, a lot of things that we have seen in archaeology and such to where, you know... Well, they're, they're not really going to, you know... We're, we're not, not sure. The word's a lie, and so is every... You can say this about just about every published word is it's censored, so they're not going to give out certain things. So just getting on with my uh, little story here. Mm-hmm. So oh, they hey, need look. something here on Earth to go out in their, uh, you know, fath- tough and tough to fathom in our, as we are limited human mind, because at one time a human being's pineal gland was much more lar- much larger and much more in use of, you know, the human. We could levitate things, for instance, to move, you know, tonnage. And what evidence do you have of this? Well, okay, Excuse ma'am. Me. So we want, we want tonnage. I'm just bringing up ideas. I'm not yeah. belittling putting it up, you know, gravity is a lie. Yeah, I mean, gravity is a lie. Yeah, I mean, can bring up gravity is a lie. Just bringing this up, just going on the story. Well, no, I mean, there, there could be lots of ideas out well, there. Well, I just how want to get it going with the but... story because you guys, you guys are very intelligent. We can, you know, de- yeah. debate, you know, the colors and pigments, you know. Yeah, but, right. Well, I mean, what, what's, do, you, do you have a question is kind of what I want. Well, I, I want to go, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll try and condense it and put yeah. it together. <clears throat> So they came here. They needed something on Earth to done. They created a being mm-hmm. to do the mining mm-hmm. uh, for which the which they wanted to get from this Earth something valuable, which they couldn't find in other places. So this okay. being uh, revolted and said, you know, got this up. We don't want to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. So they spoke to the, uh, in a sense, powerful, the all pow- not all powerful, but the the godlike being. And so mm-hmm. we we want to you know have something to do. Pops in there. Pops in Neanderthal, something that can. Do the mining, have it done. It's mammalian like and it's god like. It's alien, we'll put in the place God, just to get with words, because there's many definitions. Okay. 
So we have a mammalian god, mammalian alien-like being, Neanderthal, mm -hmm. doing the work. Okay. Say they're doing the work in the garden called Eden, Eden at the time. I see. Okay. And they're getting it all done for the aliens. Uh -huh. They're doing the slave labor, and they're worshiping them, and they've been cloned, oh. and they want to just keep this going. And whoops, one propagates. And they find out that they don't Damn have to listen to these aliens to keep the race going. And okay. we go on from there. The people come out. The aliens, in a sense, have to go underground. Mm. And then we have religion to control with this opiate religion to control the mammalian human creatures we've created on the earth. And thousands, thousands of years go on. Lots of lies, lots of things which are tough to explain. And mm. we have a Vatican and we have a... Salt Lake City. And the Pope is an alien, then. No, he's not an alien. Got it. Okay. He's just with Catholics, and Catholics are like, are like, ah. Okay, but then you're saying the aliens are they're underground, but they're still they're no, controlling the No, I'm just bringing up they had to go underground. They had to become right. Uh, okay. They had to become a ruling caste. Right. Okay. You know, bring up the ruling not 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 one with society. They become a ruling caste. But they're down there still. No, the underground, not meaning, I mean, underground, like oh, the underground hiding. paper, the underground radio. Okay. I mean, they couldn't be out and walking around. They couldn't, because they are not human. Oh. They are. Right, well, being alien. They are right. godlike and they're alien. So you, okay. thanks for, you know, not, you know, putting me down, just these ideas. Right. Time goes oh, on. No, heaven forbid. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. Well, that's um, that's real interesting, and uh, we appreciate. It. We'll uh, talk to you next no, time. No, I'm, right? I'm not. You know, just finish just saying that yeah. there's not all powerful. No, there's nothing with the church. You guys want to bring in? The, where, where the heck do we come from? We crawl from primordial sludge. Yeah. No. Yes. We know we weren't apes. Yes. All this stuff. You know, it didn't just evolve out of an amoeba and a thing. Ah. Things happen. And no, it's not defined by our limited sciences, by our limited because they bring up real idiotic brain brainwash this way. Brainwash this way. Yeah. Not saying everything is a lie, the real lie, but you can find the truth possibly in it from a perspective point of view. Got it. Time okay. change and definitions have changed. No matter what you say or think, okay. you are the environment would dictate what you right. are. Yeah, well, okay. we got it. We got yeah. time now. So we're running out of time, but we got your time to next uh, call. Define, we'll define the pyramids. There's no, but with our technology now, we have nothing. <laughs> Yeah, he's got nothing like this. They must Dude, that almost made sense. Wow, that's strange and odd. So many things we need an explanation for. Like, um, why do intelligent people buy cinema hot dogs? Do you mean that sort of weird and mysterious thing? <laughs> no, Lister, I mean like the pyramids. How did they move such massive pieces of stone without the aid of modern technology? They had massive whips, Rimmer. Massive, <laughs> massive whips. <laughs> Boy. Yeah, well, um... <laughs> yeah, that uh, was fun for a little while, and then no, we quit. Okay, takes all kinds, don't it? Yeah. Uh, Enrica has been holding very patiently, and uh, hi, you're on the air. Uh, uh, hi, I just wanted to call and say my name's Enrica, say that you guys are great. Thank you. Uh, um, yeah, sorry, it took so long. I was trying to see if the UFO story went anywhere. I know, I mean, nothing <laughs> I could say could top that. <laughs> sorry. So sometimes I just, there, there was a quote I read, and, and I forget who said it, and I'll figure, and I'll, I'll get the quote next week, and a recent issue of Skeptic, where somebody just said, you know, the best way to defeat a really, really bad argument is to let it go on. Exactly. So, uh, that was... Kind of is amusement, but so what's up? Well, I just wanted to say, you know, I was watching you guys, and I mean, especially Martin, I am just so impressed with your um, your calm nature, your equanimity, um, you know, you're very intelligent. Um, I was an ACA member last year, and I had to let my membership lapse because um, I was in school. Okay. But um, I just wanted to call and say that, you know, too often um, I see free thinker and atheist organizations who put the village atheist up as their spokesperson. Hmm. And, you know, I'm so glad that you guys um, are not like that. Yes, well, um, every once in a while we'll get into a nice smackdown. But, uh, you know, overall, uh, it's my interest on this program so that uh, people come away with it, uh, you know, not, as if, not necessarily agreeing with us. There's no way we can force anyone to agree with our point of view. But at least understanding where we're coming from. And at least uh, with some sort of an understanding of what our arguments are and why we don't believe the claims of religion. And... Um, you know, if, if callers are polite to us, we'll be polite back. If callers are not polite, we will, you know, either be not polite back or, or let them go. But uh, um, generally speaking, what I want out there is just uh, more people to understand and to think and to, uh, you know, get it all together. And so 
good, clear communication, I think, accomplishes that. Yeah, exactly. And you're very, very good at that. Well, I try. Thank you. So nice. anyway, keep up the good work, and well, I you. hope to see you guys at the bagel shop in a couple more weeks. Oh, good. 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 Thank you very okay, much. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Right. Well, take care. Uh, well, uh, breath of fresh air in the oasis. Of, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we have Brian on line two. In 15 Brian? Yes. Three, I'm sorry. Yeah. Hey, Brian, you're on the air. Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, we're just hanging out. <laughs> Having some uh, fun. Well, um, I, I, uh, I like the explanation by Red Dwarf that you guys had. That was excellent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Well, see, we're the, the thing is, I think that maybe if that guy tries hard enough, he could get a job writing for that show. <laughs> yeah. Possibly. He's, I think he's uh, almost there. Blame anybody's beliefs. That's, that's good stuff. But, uh, <laughs> uh I guess really uh, one of the things that I've been listening to today was, it, I, and I guess I just need to get your take on it. Now, the atheism that, that you guys practice is it basically um, it's just science versus whatever other theory, or and it, it's, it's does science and Christianity or any other religion have to conflict? Um, well, I, I putting it in the model of a of a fight or a battle or something like that isn't really right when. When you have a question about the universe, the world, or how something works, you look at, okay, here's all the different ideas that are out there on how this actually works, and, well, which one seems to be the best. And usually it turns out to be science. Yeah, uh, well, a good principle in, in general to live with is that um, a belief deserves as much respect as the evidence warrants. And if there's good, strong evidence for, a, or a, let's say a claim, you know, a claim deserves about as much respect as the evidence backing it up warrants. Uh, and I, so I choose what my beliefs, the things that I believe to be true, based upon the strength of the available evidence. I'm perfectly happy to be, uh, you know, to entertain good evidence for any claim anyone wants to make. The problem with religion is that I just haven't seen evidence supporting the claims are that strong. Um, there are many, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of believers will try. Like I think we've heard a couple of guys on the show today will say, well, you know, there are many things in science that you know haven't been clearly and con you know, conclusively proven to be true. So why believe those? Well, it's not so much that it's it's a specific claim of science, but it's that the methods of science of investigation and of peer review and of gathering together all the evidence, you know, seeing what it says, and if the bad outweighs the good, then the theory goes away that kind of thing. It's the process that I trust much more so than just some kind of, uh, the, the, essentially what religion consists of, which is you have a belief system that is based solely on faith, handed to you by an authority figure who says, here's what the holy book says about this subject, and believe that, and, uh, and anything else that conflicts with this is demonic or evil or just some attempt to... Uh, sway you from the true way. Yeah. I just don't uh, you know, think that that's uh, any sort of a valid way to go about deciding what you believe in any subject. But, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you and I disagree yeah. with you. It's not, it's not like religion is, is based on, uh, on somebody saying that if it's not in the book, then it's inherently wrong. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, just, I, I just wanted to you know, clear up that um, to make sure that you aren't you know, basing you know, science versus Christianity. It's, it's one of those things where my grandfather worked on the Apollo missions. He's a, he's mm -hmm. a scientist. I, I not, science isn't really my strength, so it's, it's yeah. not something that it, I, I, uh, I, of course, love it. I love watching television right now. Mm -hmm. It's a scientific deal. I love talking to you on the phone, which is fine. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing that, that's bothered me, I guess, um, watching your show today is, is that uh, listen to Christians sit there and bash people, when, and Christianity is supposed to be about love. Yeah, that's, and, a, uh, that's a little paradox, isn't it? We get, yeah. We get a lot of that, and yeah. So um, it's, it's it's not proof. It's faith, not proof. I guess is is really the thing that I guess. Yeah, and nobody's people. saying that you shouldn't have the right to do that, right? I mean, if one of if if you want to take it as a basic human right that uh, you know everyone should control their own mind, and if you want to be the sort of person who just believes stuff, yeah. uh, no one can say that uh, no, you can't do that, or no, that can't be the right way to do things, but. Uh, I just think that folks are better armed to deal with what life throws at them the more educated they are. And part of education involves this thing called critical thinking, where um, whatever idea is presented to you, you do try to look at it from all angles, and you uh, take a healthy dose of skepticism. And um, that 
will will give you better weapon readers to deal with everything in life and not just religious questions. But to get back to your original point, I think we're atheists simply because well, the reason we don't believe in God is because, in our opinion, um, theists who are the people proposing the idea that a God exists have not met by any sort of scientific standard what's called their burden of proof for their claims. Right. Uh, when uh, atheism will become a moot point the day that happens, you know, the, the day that the existence of a divine being or a god is uh, proven with uh, any sort of clear, irrefutable certainty, um, atheism will become completely irrelevant. You know, right. you know, I mean, just just like uh, you know, we you know, we know how gravity works. You know, so there's no point in not believing in gravity. You know, right. So. Uh, and uh, there is uh, another principle that has to do with the idea of extraordinary claims requiring extraordinary evidence. Um, so because when you start getting into supernatural claims, which by their nature defy what we know about how various sciences work, physics, chemistry, astronomy, that sort of thing, then those become extraordinary claims because essentially someone is saying, why well, all know we know that science says this about the universe and physics tells us that particles do all these kinds of things, but what if there were this invisible divine being who with just by the power of his will could change all that? Well then, if that claim were true, it would completely demolish everything that we already pretty much know about how the universe works as we observe it. So that kind of claim needs really unusually strong evidence to back right. it up, because it's an extraordinary claim. It's not just somebody saying, oh, hold up a pen, it'll fall, that's this thing we call gravity. It's, you know, some, it's much more difficult and more complex than that, and it requires stronger evidence to back it up. I, so I completely, here we are. I completely, I completely agree. It's, it's one of the yeah. things where I'm, I'm of the Christian faith, and I, and I think that if it was so easily uh, seen, if it, it could be proved through a theorem, then it wouldn't be faith, and there really wouldn't be a point to having a, a Christian faith. It's, it'd just be proof. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I don't believe that um, that, a, that a Big Bang uh, theory, uh, if that's the way it happened, then, then I think that that's great. It's you know it, anybody that really researched the Bible understands that that, that creationary chapter of, of, or several chapters of, of Genesis is in uh, Hebrew uh, poetry. It's written in that type of form. So mm -hmm. um, you know if that's if, it, it, my feeling is, is if God chose to uh, you know create the universe through an explosion, great. You know. <laughs> because uh, to, yeah. for for men to evolve, great. Uh, but but you guys have a great show, and uh, and it you know, obviously draws a lot of people in. So yeah. good luck to the best to the, or the best to both of you. And, uh, well, I appreciate that very much. And uh, thank you for watching. And feel free to call us back anytime. Any questions you might have. Yep. Take right. care, man. We'll see ya. Thanks a lot. Um, as any point out, by the way, we're just we're not professional scientists by any stretch yeah. of the imagination. Yeah. I mean, you're, you might be a little more so than I am because you know. And why would that be? <laughs> well, you actually, like, open up a computer and know what everything does. And I just kind of go, oh, yeah. uh-oh. But, uh, yeah. But still, uh, you know, again, we encourage folks, if you really have questions um, about such things as evolution and physics and Big Bang cosmology and how the universe works and this, that, and the other, there are all sorts of sources that you can go to. And our website at atheist-community.org has a links page for off-site other pages. Yeah. And there's one, um, there's one really good link uh, called Ask the Astronomer. Yes. Well, it's an it's a astronomer's personal homepage, but he has 3,001 questions that, oh, that he's answered yeah, from that over twice, years. Yeah. There's a whole section on Big Bang, origins, things like that. And then if you wanted to get more information about, for example, what evolution really says, uh, you can check out uh, the, uh, the talkorigins.org site, yeah. which is an archive uh, from that. To, that's a news group about the whole creation evolution controversy. Then there's worldofdawkins.com. They also have one that we there use. There we are, those top two. Yeah. And uh, especially worldofdawkins.com, because this is an um, interesting site where they talk specifically more about intelligent design. You have, for example, actual um, molecular biologists responding to people like Michael Behe, yeah. who is a yeah. molecular biologist, but also creationist, saying... You yeah. know, Darwinism's fine up to a point, but it, then we can't get beyond yeah. that point. And then there are, there's reviews of his book. So this is where, you, I mean, there, there's all kind of like, well, my hand's not doing it right, but all kinds of sources yeah. on the web and stuff. If you really want to get this information, this is an atheism show. It's not yeah. an evolution show. We this can, is an atheism yeah, show. We can tell you the basics about a lot of different, yeah. you know, ideas out there, but yeah. we may not be able to definitively tell you every single yeah. explanation that's out there. Yeah, we're not that. the experts. Um, and we're just, uh, you know, we're just a couple of guys on, evolution comes up 
on this program yeah. because it is a topic of interest to religious fundamentalists specifically. Yeah. Yeah. But mainly, this is a show about um, you know what are the what are the uh, valid uh, reasons to believe or not believe in a god. That's yeah. what it's all about. Yeah. We have time for one more caller, and then I think that we're going to. Uh, uh, well, who should I take? One or three? Let me know. Three, oh, okay. I'm told. Okay, we'll see what Tom has to say, and then that might be all we have time for. Tom? Yes. Hey, you're on the hey. air. Thanks hey, for thanks. waiting. You guys are doing a great job. Well, we appreciate that. Thanks. I have a couple of comments. First off, as far as religion goes, mm -hmm. they're all pretty much the same. And uh, I'm not going to put any of my energy into something that's founded on negativity, which seems like most uh, religions are. Like especially like the Catholic religion, which is everything's founded on guilt. Now all these people they talk about God like it's some little old guy with a gray beard and a long robe <laughs> sitting on some golden throne somewhere. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think that's the case. And then the other thing is, is that how can you trans? How can you even begin to transfer anything from the spiritual into the, the material? Because we only deal in the third dimension here. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. so it's like and so it's yeah. like. I think P.T. Barnum was right. You know, he was a sucker <laughs> born every five seconds. Mm. And then, not only that, but all these people out there, they don't realize that they are brainwashed from childhood. This stuff is pounded into them, their brains, and that's all they eat, sleep, and breathe all, all the, you know, their whole life. Yeah, well, it's woven into the fabric of culture, no doubt. Yeah. Um, just then, to, to, I was just going to say one thing in response to the point you made, is that... Um, like the question you brought up, the like things like, you know, how do you transfer from the spiritual to the physical world and all that kind of thing? The specific detailed questions that you tend to hit creationists with, um, they often have a hard time with. And what the problem is, fundamentally, is and that uh, one of our guests a couple of weeks ago, Dr. Glasser, pointed out, the reason God doesn't really service very well as an explanation for why we see stuff in the universe being the way it is is that when you offer up God as an explanation, suddenly you need to explain that. And this becomes a problem, because every single theist seems to have this different explanation for what it is, how God works, what God really does. Um, and, but if you want to get into specific questions, where did God, God come from? What are the mechanisms that, God, that go into play when God says things like, let there be light? What physical mechanism is put into practice that is <laughs> stuff like that? You hit them with those specific questions, and that's where they kind of go, "Whoa, why, that's you know, uh, mere men are not meant to know." Da da da. So this is why you, this is why you can't offer up really God as an explanation for anything because all you've done is you're trying to, you have this big mystery about the universe you're trying to solve, and so what do you do? You just create an even bigger mystery. So in other words, yeah. we're just a bunch of stupid monkeys. Well, I job. wouldn't go that far. <laughs> you know? and so and, and instead of trying to figure it out, they, somebody makes up a big story about it, and then if you don't believe their story, they kill you. Well, they, well, that certainly is how it was four or five hundred years ago. Well, yeah. I mean, look at every, war, every war that's come down the pike mm -hmm. has some kind of religious overtone. In the name of God, I'm going to kill you. you know, there's been a lot of that. Um, that's not every war, but it's been a lot yeah. of it. Been a lot of it. Um, I think, though, what we mainly have, again, like you said, there are people who just grow up, right? where this is simply woven into the fabric of culture, and they get it from infancy. And so right. they're never given a reason to question it. They're never given a reason to... Have you ever read any David Icke books? No, I sure have. Ike. David no, Icke, I-C-K-E. Uh, get a book of his called... Well, I think I've heard that name. several of them. I've heard that name. There's but... several of them, Biggest Secret. Mm -hmm. well, I'm reading one right now, which, which he talks about uh, where we came from. It's called mm -hmm. The Children of the Matrix. And he, he uh, uses a lot of information... From a lot of different sources, but mainly they go back to these uh, ancient Sumerian tablets that this guy, mm -hmm. Zachariah Seachin, has uh, done a lot of work with describing. Oh, yeah, no, I, I've heard of him too, yeah. Seachin, well, I would suggest get one of those Ike books and read it and just see, because that guy that was talking about the aliens before, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, it's like, I makes this kind of argument also mm -hmm. that, you know, there's a big hole in the evolutionary thing also. Mm -hmm. It's like, Religion is just a controlling factor. Religion yeah. was developed when the, when the emperors and the kings and queens yeah. were going out. You just, you just yeah. want to be careful also not to take uh, the God of the gaps, which is typically what they do. Say, you know, they're taught, ask questions, but when you stop being able to answer them, plug God in here. Yeah. Uh, you just want to make sure you don't replace God with something else. Like, you know, okay, well, we know it isn't God. That's stupid. But aliens did it. 
Well, well, so, you know. <laughs> but anyway, we're, we got, we're down to 40 seconds, so we got to let you go. But we appreciate you watching. We appreciate your call, all right? All right, you David take Ike. Okay, okay, take care. <laughs> Actually, I knew Thanks I heard that name. There is, on skeptic.com, there's a whole page on the Skeptics Dictionary about Zachariah Sitchin. <laughs> um, so it's, it's for other informative reading. Anyway, um, look at our big crew. I want to thank again everybody for coming out. Thank you for watching this afternoon. As it yes. shows always boisterous like this, if this is your first time to watch, well, you know, uh, Enjoy, and reruns of this program also play Tuesday afternoons, 4.30 on this channel. Thanks again. See you next time. Christians, we no, don't hate you. you. We, we just, just think, think you're wrong. Bye-bye. Have a good week.